Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. My daughter had a Russian olive tree in her yard. Around here, Russian olive is almost considered an invasive species or a weed tree. She wanted it out. It was in the wrong spot. It was smelly. So she cut it down, gave me the biggest piece of it she could, and but yet it was too small for a bowl or something like that. So I decided that I could maybe turn a vase out of it, but only if I took out the pith and used the entire log. So that meant that I had to put a plug in behind. But that's actually a plus because I certainly prefer to hollow through a bigger hole than what was on the top of this originally. So let's turn this vase hollow form out of Russian olive. This slice of fresh Russian olive came from a tree at my daughter's home. It was smelly and in the way. It is not large enough to split in half and still get anything useful. Therefore, I am mounting the entire chunk between centers. If I were to turn a bowl or a vase, then I would have to worry about the pith and the cracks coming from the pith as it dries. So, my plan is to turn the outside, turn tenons, and hollow the interior clear through. Rough going at first with my bowl gouge as it cuts through the bark and establishes concentricity. With the wood now round, I can get serious about shaping the exterior. First, a tenon as usual after trimming back the end. My skew does a great job of shaping the tenon for the jaws. Now to reverse it into the chuck. Then I can shape the exterior just a bit. Next, to get rid of the center. My choice is to drill the pith out with a Forstner bit. At least I can drill out one side with the bit. Now to hollow. I'm using a captured bar system with a boroscope looking down at the cutting bit. The camera is com connected to a video screen hanging behind the lathe. A sheet of transparency plastic covers the video screen. Then with a marker, I trace the cutting bit on the transparency. Then, as the cutter moves, I can see its position relative to the spinning wood. The only problem is the accumulation of chips captured inside the wood. I have used a laser setup. I prefer the camera, but do not have a great camera setup to show how this all works together. Now to assess how far I've gone. I did not reach to the opposite side. I will regret this later. But now I will quickly cut a tenon on this side. Now to use that tenon to reverse the vase again, then drill from this side. This leaves the walls thicker than I would prefer. That is far as I went turning this wet wood. Now I need to let it dry. I weighed it and noted the weight. Then wrapped it in plastic wrap, the six inch stu wide stuff on a spool, probably three layers and no other sealant. This is an experiment to see if it is enough to keep it from cracking while the moisture leaks through the plastic. Periodically, I weighed it and noted the weight and date. It started at 1432 grams. 13 months later, it weighed in at 861 grams, a loss of 40% by weight. When it stabilizes, it is ready to finish turn. It has grown a bit of black fungi or mold. I mount it again as is. I am shocked that it runs true enough to use the current tenons. However, I don my respirator to protect me from the mold. Afterwards, I will also wash my hands better than COVID protocols. For now, my focus is to trim enough to remove any black wood and ensure the wood is round. Then trim the tenon.
With the wood reversed, I can trim back the other end, including the tenon. Now both ends are trimmed and ready for more serious work. While deep hollowing can be interesting for the turner doing it, it is incredibly boring for others observing it. For this reason, I will not show more of it. This time, the wood is hard. Meanwhile, my vase has holes in both ends. Nothing like any vase I have ever seen. I prepared a tapered plug from another piece of Russian olive, mounted on a faceplate, and glued it in place. After the glue dried overnight, I can do the final trimming, particularly at the neck. A lot of shear cutting since I do not want to remove very much wood. Only some trimming mainly at the corners where I know there is enough wood. After a thorough sanding, I am applying walnut oil. The vase is still on the new bottom faceplate that came with the plug. Since the wood is still mounted to the lathe, why not give it a little wet sanding with the walnut oil? The neck will make a great tenon while I part the vase off. But since it has a finished surface, I protect it with some masking tape. Once the faceplate is gone, I carefully trim the excess plug material. Finally, I sand and finish the end. The bath and walnut oil brightened the wood. I do not like hollowing through a very small hole. The larger hole is the, on the base was much more comfortable for hollowing. It did require a tapered plug, but the plug was not that difficult. Using the neck as a tenon was easier to finish the base than carving or sanding. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life and it can save yours. If you use it, I'll be able to see you again next week.